Hey everybody, this is Sharik LeMay and JP. You know what it is and we have a question for you. Are you a creative in a relationship? Are you creative in a not creative relationship? Do you have a relationship period? <laughs> How do you make this work? We want to know. So we're going to find out right now. Stay tuned. Ooh. What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining us on another wonderful episode of LeMay Day Limelight. Limelight! Uh, you already know I'm Jay Pan. And I'm Sharique LeMay. We switched that up. I usually, you usually enjoy I do do it, but you know, today is just, just a different I day. I felt that, that was what I was doing. I'm, I'm not mad. This is how relationships work well. Oh, and interesting sometimes enough. Sometimes you have to. Interesting <laughs> enough, we're talking about relationships. relationships. <laughs> That's so funny. You complete my sentences. I know. <laughs> I wonder who else completes their sentences. You'll find out later. But how's um, everything going? Ooh, the children. The children. The children. We're going to specifically talk about the college children. The college children. Y'all know all this drama that happened this week with the uh, Aunt Becky. Aunt Becky. And, and I will say this before we even dive in too much into it, because mm -hmm. it's not just her and it's not just Felicity Huffman. That's very true. But this whole college scandal, um, it spans about 50 different uh, wealthy parents. Mm -hmm. um, and I, <laughs> white I, privilege. White <coughs> privilege to the max. Mm -hmm. um, but I will also say that I'm a, but not that I'm surprised, but I'm upset with the media at how much they are putting all of this on Lori and Felicity. Yeah, like they're the only because like their, of their celebrity. Their husbands are just as famous as them, mm -hmm. but the women seem to be getting more of the downfall on it. They're right. just as guilty. What's funny is it's like that whole desperate housewives thing, right? And that's like really the angle that they're trying to push. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. no pun intended, but that's what it seems like. Yeah, I have my whole rant about they the give, educational give system the because you know that there's also something circulating mostly on social media not yeah. in mainstream news in regards to a mother who was i suppose homeless at a point in time african-american mother with a child who she had going into a different school district mm. and she was arrested for this and it was like yeah. a, an offense yeah on her record and it's to me that is just mind-boggling because yeah. i know sorry mom i'm gonna put it out there i was shipped out to a different school district but that's what parents do I, in order to did it at one point everybody the my mama cut my mom them. okay don't do that you mm -hmm. know but sometimes like parents do what they gotta do to make sure that they're but it's just but there's a she line. Did, there's a line. Like you don't scam an entire <laughs> right. like fifty thousand, hundred thousand dollars worth of money. Right. And you know when your privileged child is taking the place of someone who actually worked hard mm -hmm. to get into that spot, somebody who is well deserving, mm -hmm. um, and all because of I don't know optics or because you want to say that your child went to Yale. And those girls don't give a damn. They don't. They don't they even don't. care. And like it's 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 literally in the proof. Like the the young girl said it on her YouTube page yeah. itself. She's like, I want to experience the partying and the college parties and the game days, but mm -hmm. I don't really care about school. Her exact words. That's crazy. Well, my my whole issue too is because they what they falsified like test scores. Yeah. And, and all of that. They photoshopped um, some of the kids' faces on athletes' bodies wow. so that they can get specific get into the schools on specific um, athletic scholarships and things like right. that and then once they were accepted in they faked um like an injury or a condition to which they can no longer play wow. but it didn't matter at that point because they had already been accepted okay so here's my thing it when it me. comes to test scores so i i actually had this rant on facebook as soon as i found out about this me personally as a youngster in high school i was i was an overachiever i'm not gonna lie to you i was president of this deputy of this i was mm -hmm. doing all kinds of amazing things within my high school i have I, I don't want to call it a learning disability, but there's just something about me that does not do well with test taking. Mm -hmm. I'm super creative. I can write my literature. My verbiage is good. My critical thinking is spectacular. But when it comes to tests, mm -hmm. I break under pressure. Mm -hmm. So for me, I knew that about myself, but I don't think any of my teachers really identified it. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm not taking the SATs. My parents didn't even know. Everybody just thought, oh, she's going to go to this Ivy League school and da 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 da. Yeah. I just didn't do it. I yeah. just didn't care to do it. And I think that these standard testing systems are phony mm -hmm. they're pretty much just completely phony they put you up against all these different categories and then if especially if you're a minority yeah. and you don't have the educational background nor do you have the accessibility to some of the tools and resources in order to pass the SATs let's not even talk about how much it costs you okay. just already set up to fail yeah so for me this is kind of like a aha I told you so moment and you still got your degree 
And I still got my degree and I still got into all the state universities without SAT source, so what? But that just tells me that I was right. Mm -hmm. It's not really what it's set up to do. It's set up for us to fail. Yeah. And then... And it's, it's a money scheme. It's all a money scheme. Yeah. And then now on the other token, mm -hmm. we have the whole affirmative action right. uh, situation where you have a lot of the Asian minorities who are against it. And that, this whole country and educational system is a mess, y'all. I'm over it. Yeah. Whenever I have kids, I'm just, I don't know what I'm going to do. Child, <laughs> you going to homeschool them through college. <laughs> um, can you do that? I, I mean, I don't know. We gonna find out. Uh, listen, we're <laughs> self-taught in a lot of areas, so right. I, don't, I don't see why maybe in another ten years some of the, the degrees degrees be just as qualified. You can get degrees in on jail. Your own, so I don't see why not. We'll figure that out. But in the meantime, we want to talk about relationships. We want to talk about relationships and, so, and uh, uh, two really amazing individuals that yes. I'm very excited to have on our show. I am too. Um, Wonderful people. Just come on. We just hit don't it. go. All right, so we're very excited to have a creative couple on our show today. We have Ivana De Maria, app developer, actress, producer. We also have Arap Betke. Um, did I say that right? Yeah. All right, okay. Arap really Betke, good. actor, producer, director, writer. Um, welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank you, Thank you so much for being yeah. here. We really appreciate you. You guys just look so fabulous and like <laughs> rich you. and Thank and you. We're famous. excited. We always love interviews together. So oh, that's really good. 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 So go ahead. Uh, so real quick, I really wanted to jump into, we're going to get into your acting and producing, but you just recently launched an app called Story Place app, right? <laughs> now, I mean, me personally, I'm very, I'm an advocate for storytellers through whatever platform that might be, but like, yeah. please enlighten me more about this app because it sounds really exciting it is exciting it's been it's been a journey because I I wasn't very familiar with the tech world um, and so it's been a lot of learning as we go which has been great uh, but story place is really a social platform that pretty much aims to disrupt current social media by introducing egoless content based on true stories oh. so essentially just a platform for people to share true stories and all of the stories are categorized by topics and pinned to where the story took place on a map oh. so it's essentially a map of true stories all around the world i love it so <laughs> do the people videotape themselves it's written it's so in format it's a very simple uh, thousand word or less written format so it has the, the accessibility of, of just writing a story without having to write it uh, to be a writer. Yeah, to, <laughs> you, you know, we, we don't correct grammar, we don't edit the stories at I all. Like it. it's, it's, it's just <laughs> because it, it kind of uh, developed a little bit of our uh, love for traveling and for talking to people all over the place. And then uh, we, we thought how to bring this oldest form of, of, of sharing knowledge and storytelling to the digital era. And so she developed yeah. a way to, to bring all of that into the digital world. But it's definitely designed for the non writer. So it's not right. to be. You know, there's a lot of platforms that let you write or you can just have a blog, mm -hmm. but it really requires you to know how to write, to be a writer. So this is really about about just, you have a story to tell, you can tell it, which is everyone in the world. Right, now does it have spell check? Because I'm a horrible speller. Well, <laughs> it, has, it has the same spell check than your phone would have for right, a text right. message, for okay. example, Good. but okay. yeah, but you don't need to be a writer. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's yeah, there's, so not, just, there's no grades. You know, it doesn't yeah. have to be pretty or happy. <laughs> right. Like, there's, I mean, you yeah. can imagine a lot of stories are very emotional because it's also like an emotional outlet to share your stories. So it's been great. It's been very exciting and very cool to see what people are sharing and to people's reaction to people are not used to sharing believe it or not yeah. in a in an era where we share so much mm -hmm. what we share is is really not not a lot of truth you know and and it's and that has turned into this whole thing of creating a false sense of truth with social media and there's recently thing that i blew my mind where the definition of the word story has been completely lost mm -hmm. so i was talking to these uh, teens and I was talking to them about sharing stories and I was, you know, going on and on about story plays. And I failed to realize that this whole time they thought that I meant by story that I meant something Instagram that disappears story. in 24 hours. Wow. Oh. So they thought, you know, it's just snippets of your day that disappear in 24 hours. And and this blew my mind because I realized just how important story plays is, but also the fact that that this, we're, we're used to sharing and sharing and sharing 
but you're sharing really nothing. But sometimes mm -hmm. you're sharing just a curated version of who you want you to appear to be. Exactly. And yeah. with Story Place, we want to make it more authentic, raw, more yeah. real, more about the person's story without necessarily having to attach a pretty picture right. or a pretty selfie to it. It's just the story. And also the, the, number, the number game. So the Eagle's approach has been, for example, you can see who uh, liked your story or who you follow as a storyteller, but you can't see other people's numbers. Wow. So it's about, it's not about who, how many or who how or what. Exactly. How popular. Exactly. It's more so about just connecting through stories. Well, that's, that's amazing. That's very, well, speaking of which, I'm sorry, you're on the, you were on the cover of Fortune magazine. Yes, uh, so, Marie Claire. Marie Claire magazine. So that's really interesting to me that you're talking about ego. Do you feel some sort of that ego boost with that or is it more about your philanthropy yeah, work? Yeah, she did not talk to me the whole week after that <laughs> cover. I couldn't get a reach of her. She would not answer the phone. I was actually phone. very excited about the Marie Claire and he was, he like didn't get it. I was like, yeah, it's a girl thing. It's just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Girl. We love it. That's 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 but yeah. No, yeah. So what sure. was that experience like for you then? I mean, I think that especially in this industry, especially, I mean, I use social media a lot for work mm -hmm. and it does require you to curate a lot of what you're putting out there. Uh, and also because it's, people don't realize that it's a huge responsibility right. and that's the most worrying part of all. You know, you post something and there's all these people listening to it, all these young girls, vulnerable girls who really believe in what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So you need to, yeah, you need to curate every word that comes out of your mouth into social media. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the ego, I mean, I think it's practically impossible to eliminate ego as a whole. That's yeah. true. But it's really about shifting the focus of that ego into, for example, when I do magazine covers or things like that, and it's really talking about my achievements or mm -hmm. people believing in you, it, it's definitely an ego boost, mm -hmm. but in a, it's, you know, it's also, I guess, a synonym for motivation and somebody's believing in yourself and it's really nice to yeah. see that yeah and it also comes with a lot of responsibility Definitely. because to have a louder voice and to to be in the cover of, of a magazine you have to have something to say uh that i think that transmits a positive message message more more than just the banality of being you know a, an attractive person to to look at i think mm -hmm. if you have something that go, that goes with that the, yeah the, a positive uh, message for something for of change. substance. Yes, yeah. exactly. Impact. Yes, impact. Exactly. I think that's that's really important. For that. <laughs> I'm blown away. I know. You guys, I know. Are, awesome. you guys are just, you guys are just taking it. Back. Okay, so y'all y'all are doing a lot, a lot. Um, you're also working with Salma Hayek. You're co-producing Monarca on Netflix. Tell us a little bit about that project. Well, I produced. So Monarca is a TV show that is based in Mexico City, mm -hmm. uh, but there's a part of it that is in LA. Okay. So Lemon Films is producing. Lemon Studios is producing the. Mexico Mexico City part of it with Salma Hayek as well. Salma Hayek is an executive producer on the show mm -hmm. and it's for Netflix and I produced the part that happened in LA. Uh -huh. So we all Wow, that's awesome. that's awesome. Yes, it's a very cool project and it's definitely, um, it's gonna come out this year. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure when, okay. uh, but it's, it's very exciting and it's very risky and different content, mm -hmm. I think for Netflix and especially for the uh, Latin American market. Mm -hmm. So I'm very excited to see. You're it. also starring in it? No. No, you're just, no, okay, just cool. Got it, awesome. Okay, <laughs> okay. bueno, <laughs> Well, I wanna jump into the relationship stuff. Cause yeah. you guys, I, first of all, how you're finishing each other's sentences, it's great. I love it. We gotta keep it going. <laughs> So this this actual episode is about relationships and you know romantic relationships, friendships, and being a creative. So both of you are both very creative people. How has that been for you working with each other in the, in your relationship? <laughs> well, first off, how long have you been together? Yeah, we wanted two years. Two years. Okay. A little over two years. We actually met on set. Okay. Yeah. And now we actually are co-writing, co-producing, right. yeah, co-acting in a feature we, film. We, we started a relationship as a long distance relationship kind of thing. And a friend of mine told me, listen, to make this work, you guys should read a book together. So we started reading a book together, you know, over the phone or on But I mean, FaceTime. like he would read to me or I would read to him. It's okay. not like night, we both yeah, read yeah. it. Yeah. Like, actually. And then we said, why don't we take it to the next level? We always uh, spoken about writing I stuff. I thought it meant something else. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> okay. He meant let's write a script yeah, together. I'm like, yeah, let's I write a like, script. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, um, so we started writing a script, but we would actually m make appointments so we would get on skype and we would say we're gonna write from eight to ten and and it was 
two writers. She, she, she would be like, so what do you think of them? I'm like, no, 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 I'm not talking yeah. to my girlfriend right now. We're writers. <laughs> was, and, then and then he would actually hang up and then call me back as my boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> it was ridiculous, wow. but it, it worked. Yeah, but it worked. It, it worked. sounds I mean, ridiculous, we had but to really, it worked. I think one of the most important things of co-creating things together, especially as a couple, is to be able to separate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of put yeah. the things in different uh, boxes, you know, a little bit. Compartmentalize. Not, compart yeah. yeah. And not mix them because then it kind of gets messy. We, we, we try to <laughs> keep these schedules where we write or we create or we work on certain projects. Mm -hmm. And then that also has to do a lot with our relationship, but we try to, to separate in, in, in time. Yeah, in and time actually slots. our script is about a couple's therapy, so it's oh. really yeah. funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, it seems to be effective. Well, <laughs> it's actually it's funny because as actors, you know, writers don't act. Mm -hmm. And so it, you see that a lot as an, as an actor reading some scripts, you're like, who, who speaks like that, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, so in, in some of the dialogues of the, of the feature film, we would put our phone and like, you know, record, mm -hmm. and then we would start actually acting out the scene and fighting we, we like say, improv. We would say, okay, this is circumstances, your character. <laughs> Are, okay, let's go out. And we started fighting and ranting and just, you know, going crazy. The, the then were they like real scenarios? Are you no, like the movie we, we, scenarios? Like yeah, in character scenario, of yeah. the movie because we're also going to act in the movie. The neighbors so. sometimes thought it was real. They would come <laughs> knocking and they were like, no, no, we're working. No, no, no. It's We'd be like, and then we say, stop. Okay. They're like, okay, let's hug it out. Okay, let's write it. Okay. <laughs> it was really, uh, it's been amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was fun. It was I'm going to try life. that with yeah. your boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. so it I is, it should know. be a therapy. You know? I want to know, so you guys are both creative. So could you tell us a little bit about what it's like in comparison to dating someone who isn't a creative? Like if you were, if someone in the past that you dated that, is there a distinct difference on what that's like and feeling supported by that person? I think there's a big difference, not necessarily in being creative, because you can be creative and not work in creative industries yeah. necessarily, but it's more so I think about specifically our industries mm -hmm. are mm. so unstable yeah mm -hmm. financially physically emotionally i mean it requires a lot of instability mm -hmm. and it requires a certain personality to be able to handle that yeah uh, as actors of course it's it's very difficult in, in in acting situations you know you need to understand that world in order to really understand everything and then there's this whole trust thing you need to build and you're constantly in long distance so mm -hmm. you need to find ways to make that work I've thought about it a lot and yeah, I've had other relationships where I actually, it's very rare to share exactly the same sort of path. Uh -huh. they, weren't, um, they weren't as good, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's definitely, you know, I've thought about it because sometimes, I don't know, we'll both have a Tuesday that just happens to be our free day. So we're like, oh, Tuesday, Sunday. And then we'll just take Tuesday off and, and, you know, pretend like it's Sunday on Tuesday because Sunday we were working. That wouldn't be able to work with somebody who has a nine to five every day in the financial district. And you know yeah, what I mean? And, so, and, and, as you said, more so of the, of the job that the person does, I think there's an inherent creativity and, and, and we kind of look uh, for those people in our lives and in, 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 in emotional relationships and in, in friends relationships. I think when you're in this creative world, you thrive to to find people who are also creative minded and, and who see the world in a different way. Not necessarily being an artist or, or you know, a, a painter, a musician or an actor, but just people who see life in a more creative way. I think it, for us, it's been very nurturing and, and, and it's, it, it, it's inspiring, you know, to see people that are creative in so many different ways, even, even I don't know, we were saying as, as, as our work as, as activists, people find such creative ways of, of, of making change yes. that I think that that for us has been so inspiring lately and that's why we want to kind of tap into more uh, this year. It's true. I think also one thing that immediately comes to mind and I don't know if it's related to creativity or just to a certain personality but it's something about being um, about admiring each other yeah I think that admiration and, and I really believe this admiration is the key to any relationship yeah. I and mean, because all the love and romantic and this and the excitement all of these things sort of shift and go and come back and things happen in life mm -hmm. but admiration I think keeps you on a constant path of looking at the person next to you and seeing somebody who, who makes you want to be better, mm -hmm. somebody who you are attracted to, and that's that comes with admiration, you know? Right. So it's respect. So then I have a question. <laughs> Do you think there's such thing as healthy competition within a relationship? Yes. yes. Oh, we're, we're, we're so we're, competitive. We're very competitive <laughs> like, yes. so many ways. We are yes. so Bring it on. And in what ways? I'm very curious. Well, we love playing games, board, since board games. Sometimes <laughs> we, we, had a, we had a phase where all our 
conflict, we would sort it out with playing FIFA. We'd be like, okay, let's play a game from PlayStation. Wow. And then whoever won had to... And it got really competitive. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. It was okay. the one. Me. Obviously, Obviously. me. No, oh, I, sure. I gave her I, I, I gave her better teams and stuff. <laughs> no, and then we, we like to... Um, board games and puzzles. She loves puzzles, love so puzzles. We, we do puzzles a lot. And, and I think competitive in a way that is not, as you said, that is not unhealthy. That right. I, I say, okay, you're doing really good in this, and I encourage that, and that makes me want to say, okay, I want to be better in this other area of my life. Right. So it's a constant kind of admiration thing of, of yeah. pushing ourselves and getting ourselves out of our comfort zone and pushing ourselves to kind of be more and be more and do better things and and, and, and strive for, yeah. for more things every day. Because if, I think if not, a relationship becomes kind of stagnant. Yes. Yeah. When, when, when there's not that little edge of competition, um, there's nothing to to strive for. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's good competition, I think, because it's not, oh, I win and you lose. It's mm -hmm. more so like, oh, you're here and, you know, you wake up and suddenly he already worked out. I'm like, what? No. I like, don't <laughs> work out too. And, oh, you want to match. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're constantly wanting to match. It's not like I want to destroy this. It's like, no, it's... Sometimes it's, you... Sometimes you... <laughs> <laughs> she just has extra couple of girls in the <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we want to know what you guys have coming up. We talked about your movies. What about for you, if you have any other projects? Right now, um, I'm about to start a project in Mexico. I'm about to start a series called La Usurpadora, which is for Televisa. And um, I'm going back to Mexico in a couple of weeks. I'm starting to shoot that for, for a few months. And no, then I come back here and I have a couple of movies by the end of the year. But um, I think one of my biggest projects right now is working on our movie, which has been a, a whole experience and, and a whole realizing how getting to write and finish a script mm -hmm. it takes a lot of work a lot of rewriting and hitting walls and saying oh we're not never gonna make this but then when we do it we have so much fun doing it that the, the process in itself has been a, a discovery yeah. Yeah. We're, we're definitely gonna shoot that film. Yes. Okay. We're looking forward to it. Yes. Do you have the title the for it yet? Couples Therapy. Couples Therapy. Oh, it's Good actual idea. couples it's therapy. It's actually about a, couple, about a couple that goes to therapy, goes to this immersive couples therapy immersive. in the middle of the jungle. And it's based oh. on Mayan rituals. Is there like ayahuasca and all that? It's all of that. Oh, yeah. 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 But we're definitely looking forward yeah. to that. If you can let our audience yeah. know where they can find you, your Instagram. Yeah. Yes. And socials and also shout out your um your activism uh initiatives oh yes yeah Bus. well my name is arap bethki you can find me at arap mx in twitter and instagram and um we're I'm currently working with the surf rider foundation and uh and al gore we were just um co-hosting for the climate reality with al gore and uh we really want to bring out the word of, of just mm -hmm. being aware of, of the world that we live in and, and just taking small actions in, in order to create a big change in, in, in climate change and yeah. in environmental. And I am Ivana de Maria. You can find me on Instagram at Ivana Maria, on Twitter at Ivana D Maria, and on Facebook, Ivana de Maria official page. And you can download Story Place yes. on the App Store. You, uh, you can also follow it on Instagram at My Story Place. And in terms of initiatives, there's a lot of things I'm passionate about currently. One of them being the San Fernando Valley Children's Refugee Center that I'm uh, the vice president of the board. And I'm uh, very proud of all the work that's happening there with uh, um, all of the basically the unaccompanied minors that are, arrive in the U.S. to seek political asylum. It's a refugee center that really helps a lot with that, with all the support that they need. And the Farm Workers um, Alliance in here in the U.S., which protects the rights of farm worker women and of minorities in workplaces. Oh. Can I just say, you guys are just like a power couple. Yeah. We, 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 try, we try not to use that term loosely. <laughs> yeah. But the two Appreciate of you are definitely, a, like, yeah. that's powerful. And it, it's powerful because you guys are doing it not just for yourselves. It's it's for the, the community and, and the world as a whole. So I really commend you for that. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's very, <laughs> thank it's you. very inspiring also to come here and listen. Uh, 
to, to ourselves, you know. <laughs> yeah, to, no, I, sometimes absolutely. you kind of recontextualize a story when when you listen to it it's like this. And, mm -hmm. and thank you for that support. There's a lot really. of hard days, and that's and yeah. it, there's days when you're just like, oh my god, what am I doing? <laughs> and it's really nice to to come in and talk about all this. And yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, you're more than welcome to come back. We're, yes, we're going to have plenty of more seasons to come. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys so so much for tuning in, and make sure you get in your relationships and your therapy and okay. all that in order. Take make some advice. <laughs> Definitely. Again, I am Sharika LeMay. I'm Jay Penn. Thank you for watching LeMay Day Limelight, and we will see you next time. On our season finale. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>